knit one more row. That's your basic tuck stitch. See how it's knitted and pulled up the fabric? Your tuck stitch will pull up your length of your fabric, but it'll make it a little wider. Um, different um, patterns of tuck stitches uh, create different effects from the purl side and from the knit side. Um, you want to always do a sample before you create something and decide uh, which side you want to show. Um, most of your tuck stitches are prettier from the purl side than they are from the knit side, so you want to plan accordingly. Uh, let's try that one more time. Let's knit two more rows. Let's pull these needles. We'll do four. And let's knit three rows this time instead of two. Okay, push them back to forward working position with latches open. Knit slowly. Oops, oh, I'm stuck. Thing jammed. There we go. Now in this yarn, if I was going to make a blouse or something or a sweater, I would probably do three rows. I think it's a little prettier. Now for you can also you can create some different stitches like the brick stitch uh, with. Uh, using your tuck stitch. Uh, you would knit a few rows in the main yarn, which we've done. Push every fourth needle into holding position. So, every fourth needle. Okay. Um, now using my second carriage, threaded again with my burgundy yarn, I'm going to knit two rows in a contrasting color. Okay, so as I said, we're knitting two rows in a contrasting color. We are going to push our needles back to forward working position, always making sure our latches are open. I know I keep saying that, but if you don't do that, you're going to drop a stitch. Knit two rows. Okay, we knit two rows with the white. Now we're going to bring forward again to holding position every fourth needle. Knit two rows in the contrasting color, the burgundy. Push those needles back to forward working position, uh, making sure your latches are open. Knit two rows in the white. And you continue on, and that's how you do the brick stitch. Now I'm going to show you how to do the butterfly stitch, which is also a tuck stitch. It's a different kind of a tuck stitch. You do it a little bit different way. So if, what I'm going to do is knit six rows. You're going to get your latch hook tool. And I'm going to decide where I want to have my butterfly stitch. And I'm going to count down six rows from where I want it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Insert my latch hook in that sixth stitch. Drop and release the stitch and ladder it down to the hook. Reach up behind the knitting and grab that upper ladder. Pull it down through the stitch and then up again onto your needle. Okay, again, one, two, three, four, five, six. Drop and release, ladder it down, up, around, and behind, and put it up on the needle. Okay, one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Drop it down and release, up, 
to the top, grab that one, oops, pull it through the stitch, and bring it up to the needle. Now with the butterfly stitch, the only thing is because you're pulling so much on the adjacent stitches that it makes them very tight. I do find that it is easier sometimes to knit that next row with the needles in forward working position, making sure my latches are open. I find that I usually don't drop any stitches. We'll see what happens. Oops. Yep, there we go. And that's the butterfly stitch. So we've done a basic tuck stitch, a brick stitch, which is a tuck stitch, and a butterfly stitch. There's lots of other variations and patterns you can do using your tuck stitches. Try, experiment, and have fun. Okay, before we actually do the seam as you go technique, I wanted to show you what some of the other stitches we've already done looked like from the other side of the knitting. Here's the little sample that I made. These are the eyelets that we did. These, this is the short rowing that we did. Here are some of the different tuck stitch. Here's the two row tuck, and here's the three. You can't really see them too well from the knit side. They do show up much better from the back side. Here's the brick stitch that we did using the tuck stitch. Here's the butterfly stitch. This is from the knit side. I do think it's a lot prettier from the purl side. Okay, now we're going to do the short, the seam as you go technique. Okay, the first thing we want to do is I've already and I've already done it is uh, close edge cast on however many needles you want for your second uh, panel. Um, I did 20 because we're just doing a sample. And I uh, did an E-wrap cast on. Now, on this end, uh, the very end left hand side needle, you want to hang the first edge stitch of that first sample panel that we did. Okay, which is I think this right here. That's the first, the hardest thing to find is that correct very first row edge stitch. That can be the hardest thing to find, but if you get it right, then your count won't be off. If you get it wrong, your count's going to be off for the whole second row. Okay, so hang that edge stitch on there. You'll have three pieces of yarn on the needle. You want to hang both sides of, sides of that edge stitch, uh, not just half the stitch, but the whole stitch. So there will be three pieces of yarn on the needle. Okay, now I'm going to hang my hem. And my ravel cord. Open up all my latches would help. Okay. Push it back against the bed of the machine. Move your needles to forward working position. Check to make sure all your latches are open. And knit the first row a little slowly. It can be a little stiff to knit that first row. Dropping tools on the floor, that's not a good idea. Okay. One. Two. Knit two rows. I'm going to take this piece here and bring it around the front so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, you want to hang every other end stitch on the left end needle every other row. So you always want to knit two rows, count up two stitches, hang a stitch. Okay, so here's the one we just knitted. The next stitch will look like a little, almost like a knot. That's a stitch. Okay, and then the next one, here it is, looks like a loop. I'm grabbing not half, but both sides, two pieces of yarn of that stitch, and I'm hanging it on the left side needle. OK? 
Okay, now I'm going to knit two rows. Okay, now at this point, if I was doing an afghan, I would probably go ahead and hang a clip weight over here on the right side just to even out the weight a little bit. Here the, here's the stitch that we just did. Here's the next one. It looks like a little knot. Here's the one after that, the loop. Both sides, two pieces of yarn. I'm hanging it on the end needle. And knit two rows. Okay, here's the one we just did. Here's the next one. Looks like a knot. Here's the one after that. I'm going to hang that. Okay, knit two rows. Okay, one more time. Here's the one we just did. Here's the next one. Here's another one. Okay, both sides of the stitch, the whole stitch, not half a stitch. I've found that that makes a nicer looking seam if you hang the whole stitch. Okay, okay again. Here's the one we did. One, two. You do want to try to make sure on the first piece that you knit before you start doing the joining, as you're knitting this first piece that you get nice, uh, neat, even stitches on the edges. Um, the nicer, neater the edge stitches look, the nicer, neater your seam will when you do the seam as you go technique. Although it does never look as good as if you stitched it together with a Kitchener stitch or some other invisible uh, stitch that you would use on knitting. I knit two rows. Okay. I think that's enough. I think we can take it off of here and turn it over so you can see what it looks like. Okay, that's what it looks like. That's the seam as you go technique. If you do it right, it's not very noticeable and any little irregularities in the seam usually disappear after you wash the item. I use it a lot when I'm using afghans. It's quick and it's easy. Uh, hope you had fun with this video. I hope I didn't make too many mistakes. And try it, make a few samples, and enjoy.